Uh, today, inshallah, we will be starting a new series uh, of the Hadith Al Qudusi. So, we might say, what is the uh, difference between Hadith Qudsi and the regular Hadith? Al Hadith Al Qudsi is the sayings of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's the words of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as revealed to him by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Almighty. So the chain of authority or the Sanad of the Hadith Al-Qudsi is traced back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Whereas the Sanad of the regular Hadith is traced back to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the regular hadith is the words, the actions, uh, what Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam approved, what he, uh, what he did. So all of this is regular hadith, but the hadith al-Qudsi is the words of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as revealed to him by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Um, we can say the number of the Hadith Qudsi, as uh, Ibn al-Arabi said, it's about 101 Hadith. And uh, whereas the uh, Hadith, this the sound Hadith that was narrated by al-Bukhari himself, only al-Bukhari, and we know there are many narrators, al-Bukhari, um, uh, Muslim, uh, al-Nasai, uh, Tirmidhi, so one. One of them, Al-Bukhari, has narrated 4,000 Sahih sound hadith. So the number is uh, um, uh, different between the hadith Al-Qudsi, which is about 101 hadith, and the hadith, the regular hadith of Sayyid Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which was over 4,000 that is narrated by one of the uh, Bukhari by one of the narrators. Uh, Muslim عنه, narrated over 3,000 hadith. So a lot of hadith, regular hadith, why? Uh, the hadith al Qudsi is 101 hadith. Now, someone might say, what's the difference between the hadith al Qudsi and the Quran? Both of them were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when we uh, read the Quran, we say Allah said, uh, your Lord said, Allah said in the Quran. But when we read the Hadith al-Qudsi, we say Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah said so and so. So this is the difference. The uh, Quran is mentioned directly, while the uh, Hadith al-Qudsi is mentioned through Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But uh, the, the words are the words of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Something else, uh, we can read the Quran in the prayer. But if we read Hadith Qudsi in the, play, in the prayer, it will invalidate the prayer. So we only pray with the Quran and we read the Hadith Al-Qudsi uh, out of the Quran. So today, inshallah, we will cover uh, a few Hadith uh, of the Hadith Al-Qudsi. However, it will not be uh, the same way that we followed during our previous series when we when we uh, talked about the uh, uh, the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the previous series, but uh, we used to finish one hadith and move then to the second hadith. Now I think 
for the for today and we might do the same uh, uh later on during our sessions which will be 12 sessions so we will we will talk about um uh the hadith and within it we will go through another hadith and we will go back to the first hadith so we will get them all together spoken inshallah talked about so the first hadith that we will be talking about today is qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqulu allah azza wa jal ana inda dhanni abdi wa ana ma'ahu hina yadhkuruni فإن ذكرني في نفسه ذكرته في نفسي وإن ذكرني في ملأ ذكرته في ملأ خير منه وإن اقترب إلي شبرا تقربت إليه ذراعا وإن اقترب إلي ذراعا وإن اقترب إلي ذراعا اقتربت إليه باعا وإن أتاني يمشي أتيته هرولا so the Allah's Messenger وسلم, is saying, Allah said, uh, I am as my servant thinks I am. And I am with him as he remembers me. Or when he makes uh, mention of me. And if he remembers me in his heart or to himself, I also remember him to myself if he mentions me in an assembly or within a group i will mention him i will make mention of him in an assembly better than his better than his assembly and if he draws near me an arm's length or if he comes to me uh, draws near me an arm's length i draw him Phantom legs. I come to him. I draw near him. And if he comes to me walking, I rush towards him. So let's let's talk about, let's dig into the meanings, the deep meanings of this hadith. Now here from this hadith, we realize that when when we are believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we uh when we are Muslims when we have faith then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us con in control of things so if we want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come closer to you as soon as he sees that you are coming towards him. So he asks you during the day to come be before him five times a day during the prayers. But that was not the end. He left the door open so that you can come to him anytime you want. Now imagine that you want to meet um, the president and you ask uh, you ask for an appointment to meet the president the president might accept or he might refuse your your request and if he accepts he will uh, give you the place and the time and he might ask you for a reason. Why do you want to meet him? What do you need uh, from this uh, meeting? But if you think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah left the door open for the Muslim, for the believer, to meet him anytime he wills, to meet him anytime he wishes. And the best place to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the uh, gatherings of dhikr. And here I'm going to mention another hadith, another Qudsi hadith. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, 
ان لله ملائكه يطوفون في الطرق يلتمسون اهل الذكر فاذا وجدوا قوما يذكرون الله تنادوا هلموا الى حاجتكم so سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم says God has angels who go about on the roads seeking those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when they find people doing so they call to one another come come to what you are looking for so قال فيحفونهم بأجنحتهم إلى السماء الدنيا so they surround this group of people who come together to uh, to to meet uh, Allah uh, to, to to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they would uh, uh, circle them they would surround them with their wings up to the lowest heaven قال so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say فيسألهم ربهم وهو أعلم بهم ما يقول عبادي so he said that uh, he, he, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is talking to the angels and uh, he asks them although he is the best informed about them and he knows uh, uh, everything so he asks them ما يقول عبادي what are my servants saying قال the, the angels would reply يقولون يسبحونك ويكبرونك ويح, ويحمدونك ويمجدونك they are exalting magnifying praising and glorifying you so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَيَقُولُوا هَلْ رَأَوْنِي Did they see me? And the angels would say, لَا وَاللَّهِ مَا رَأَوْكَ No, indeed, they have not seen you. فَيَقُولُوا كَيْفَ لَوْ رَأَوْنِي He asks how they would act if they had seen me. So imagine now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the angels, those people, are remembering me and they are glorifying me, they are praising me and they have not seen me. So what would happen? What, how, how is it that if they see me? And the angel says, So they said, the angel said, if they had seen you, they would have engaged more earnestly in worshiping and glorifying thee. So they will worship you more, they will glorify you more, and they would have extolled uh, you much more. They will have made much mentioning, much remembrance, much dhikr of you, Ya Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَيَقُولُ فَمَا يَسْأَلُونَ and Allah asks, what are they asking for? And the angels say, yes, The angels would reply, they are asking you for paradise. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, Have they seen the angel? Have they seen paradise? And they say, لا والله يا ربي ما رأوها. Oh, no, indeed, my Lord, they have not seen it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, فَكَيْفَ لَوْ رَأَوْهَا And how, how they would act if they had seen it. So the angels would uh, reply, لَوْ أَنَّهُمْ رَأَوْهَا كَانُوا أَشَدَّ حِرْصًا وَأَشَدَّ لَهَا طَلَبًا وَأَعْظَمَ فِيهَا رَغْبًا if they had seen it, they would have been more intensely eager for it. They would have asked more earnestly for it. And they would have had a greater desire for it. 
then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on with this amazing conversation with the angels and he says so uh, why are they uh, what are they seeking refuge from so they would say from hell and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the same thing have they seen it? No, indeed, my Lord, they have not seen it. So Allah asks, How would they act if they had seen it? And the angels would answer, If they had seen it, they would have been more earnest in flying from it, in being away, far away from it, and fearing it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, I call you to witness that I have forgiven them. One of the angels says, فيهم فلان ليس منهم إنما جاء لحاجة. One of the angels says, among them is so-and-so who came only for something he wants. He, and he, he was not coming to attend the dhikr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, جليسهم, They are the people who are seated together and he who sits with them will not be miserable. Imagine the merciful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we go to, to those blessed gatherings of dhikr, remembering Allah, remembering Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, always remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning us up high in the sky with a group who are better than the group we are sitting with. So this is one of the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning us. This is one of the ways that we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now we can ask, we can say, oh, is this the only way? We say no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given us the Holy Quran. And whenever we open the Quran and we read, then we are meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through reading the, the Holy Quran, our, uh, uh, our, our bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets uh gets bigger gets stronger so our heart is attached to the holy quran our heart is attached to the ayahs of the quran and our heart will will be attached closely to the ayahs that in which uh, in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells whom he loves who are the people whom he loves. And some of these ayahs are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 195, and do good. Indeed, Allah loves the doers of good. So this is the first group. The doers of good are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah yuhibbu tawwabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Allah loves those who are constantly repentant. Allah yuhibbu tawwabin. Allah yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Allah loves those who purify themselves. Always. Uh, uh, in Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muttaqeen. Allah loves the righteous who fear him. Those who always feel the, uh, uh, the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with them. So they feel that Allah is with them. At-Tasturi radiallahu anhu says, 
Allah معي Allah is with me Allah ناظري Allah is looking at me Allah شاهدي Allah is witnessing on me so everything we do is recorded and on the day of judgment we will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be rewarded or punished for our deeds so we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya so that we will get the ease in the day after in surah al-imran ayah 146 Allah says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves love the people, loves the people who practice patience, who, who, who are, who, those who are the steadfast. And in uh, the same surah, Surah Al Imran, Ayah 159, Allah says, Allah yuhibbul mutawakkilin. Relay upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah loves those who relay upon Him. In Surah Al Ma'idah, Ayah 42, Inna Allah yuhibbul muqsitin. Allah loves those who act justly. So there are different types of people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, and the list goes on and on and on. So we have to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those whom he loves, those whom he is happy and pleased with, to make us uh, always of the, of the winners, uh, of, the, of the winners uh, on the day of judgment. But even when we ask these duhas, we have to ask the highest that we can think of. We have always to remember that we are asking the giver, we are asking the most generous. So we have to ask the highest that we can imagine because he is the giver, he, can, he gives, he's so generous. And, and here's a story that Sayyidina Muhammad sallam, narrates about two men they used to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very righteous people very good people and uh, they used to pray together do qiyam layl together pray the night prayer together uh, they fast together they do the righteous things together everything they do together and when they both died one of them was in al jannah and the other one was in the highest maqam of al firdaus al a'la so they both asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah says, Allah answered them and he said, فَقَالَ كَانَ أَحَدُهُمْ And this is the words of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, كَانَ أَحَدُهُمْ يَدْعُوا اللَّهُمَّ أَدْخِلْنِي الْجَنَّةِ وَكَانَ الْآخَرُ يَقُولُ اللَّهُمَّ أَدْخِلْنِي الْفِرْدَوْسَ الْأَعْلَى So they but the, one, one of them used to say, Allahumma, uh, oh Allah, I want to be in paradise. And the other one was saying, oh Allah, I want to be in the highest maqam of Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. So remember to ask the highest that you can imagine, the highest that you can think of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he gives us the advice and he says, Inna fil jannati mi'ata daraja. Ma bayna kulli darajatayn kama bayna al-samai wal-ard. Wal-firdawsu a'la al-janna wa awsatuha. Wa fawqa thalika arshu al-rahman. Wa minha tufajjaru anharu al-janna. Fa'idha sa'altumu, fa'idha sa'altumu Allah fa'salawhu al-firdaws. So the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this advice. And he says, Verily, in paradise, there are a hundred levels. What is it between every two levels? Every two levels is like what is between the heavens and the earth. al firdaus is the highest of the firdaus, and it's the most expansive. And above that is the throne of Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. And from it, it uh, the rivers of paradise. The rivers are, of paradise are made to flow uh, to flow forth. So when you ask Allah, so this is the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad. When you ask Allah, ask Him for Al-Firdaus Al-Ala. 
So know what to ask and how to ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and we have uh, to pay attention now when to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the best time to, uh, to make dua? Actually, the doors of Allah, as we just mentioned, are open all the time. You can make dua, uh, you can make dua anytime. But Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, informs us about the best time to make dua. And uh, he narrated, Yanzilu uh, Rabbuna tabaraka wa ta'ala kulla laylatin ila samai dunya. Hayith wa yabqa thuluthu layli al-akhir. Hayakul, man yad'uni fa astajibu lah. ومن يسألني فأعطيه ومن يستغفرني فأغفر له. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Our Lord, so Tabaraka wa ta'ala, the blessed and the exalted, descends every night to the lowest heaven when one third of the last part of the uh, uh, of the night is left. So he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Who supplicates me? so that I may answer him, who is making the dua so that I answer him, who asks me so that I, I give him, who asks me for forgiveness so that I, I may forgive him. So that's one third of the last part of the night. This is the time when everyone at your household is sleeping this is the time when you are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the time when you can talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without engaging in anything else. There is nothing to distract you. This is the time during which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asked and he will answer the dua. So do not lose this precious time. Wake up, wake up during this time. It doesn't need to do the uh, to be the whole night. Choose maybe you can choose 15 to 20 minutes before the adhan of Fajr, before the uh, Fajr adhan calls. Make wudu, pray to rakas, and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each and every one of us has something to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or let me put it, has a lot of things to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he promised to answer our calls. In Surah Ghafir, Ayah 16, he said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord says, call upon me, I will respond to you. And when you make dua, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfills your dua, remember, remember the other ayah, that he says in Surah Ibrahim, Ayah 7, لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيبَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful, I will surely increase you, increase you in favors. So whenever you have something good, a job promotion, a new home, something, something good that happens to you, remember who gave this to you. It's not your hard work. It's not your hard work without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the giver. Remember that you have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are grateful, I will surely, surely increase you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you should count the favors, the favors of Allah, you could not enumerate them. Look at yourself. You can use your eyes to see, your ears to hear. You can use your legs to walk. You don't need anyone to hold you. You don't need anyone to hold your hand. You don't need a cane to, to lean on. You, uh, your kidneys are working perfectly. Imagine the blessings just of using the restroom. Imagine that. If imagine the 
the, the blessings that Allah, the countless breath blessings that Allah has given us in our body, that's only in our body. If anything goes wrong, then more things would go wrong. So many favors, so many blessings that Allah has given us. We have to, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. We have to practice the good thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jabir radiallahu anhu narrated that he heard Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says three days, just three days before his death, لا يموتن أحدكم إلا وهو يحسن الظن بالله عز وجل. None of you should die except in a state of thinking good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us should have good thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is allowed to say, no one should say, I made so many big sins. I am doomed. How can I, how can Allah forgive me? No, 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 this is not acceptable. Do not say these words. Have you heard the hadith that says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created mercy and he divided it to 100 portions? He descended one portion down to the earth and he kept 99 portions up in the sky. So with the one portion, we see all the mercy among people. How the mother takes care of her children, how the animals take care of their babies, how uh, people take care of each other, how neighbors pay attention to each others, how, how people help each others. This is one mercy that Allah has sent amongst people. But imagine that he kept 99 portions of this mercy till the day of judgment. Uh, did the day of judgment to show his mercy to, to the followers of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to show his mercy to those who say la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah to those who have good thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the merciful, he is the forgiver he is the only one who says kun fayakun be and it will be there is nothing hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is difficult for him. It is one word, two letters, be, and it will be. So let's all practice this act of worship. And this act of worship is called having a positive belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having a positive belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having good thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the merciful. We believe he is the merciful and we believe of his mercy in the day of judgment. So what is your opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you believe Allah will do to you? This is our hadith of today. We have to practice the good thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that he has given us. We have to thank him and we have to say, Ya Rabbana, laka alhamdu wa shukru wa ni'mata wa rida. And until we meet again next week, inshallah, I would leave you now by sending your salam and my salam and salawat to our beloved Prophet. سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته